Hi guys, Keith Arkenberg Farms. It is well, a little over halfway through February 2021 and it's cold out. It hasn't been above freezing and going on about eight or ten days now. As you can see, Buddy the farm dog just loves it out here. He lays down in the snow. That's a good old time. But got a box of parts and pieces here. And I've been uh, looking on the internet at these standing plant, jab planters, het field planters, called all kinds of different things. But what I really want to do is go into the pack house here, see if I can't build one. Because the big one they sell through standing plant is two and three quarters on the inside, and the small one's only one inch diameter on the inside. And neither of those will really work for the plugs I have. I mainly use the 200 cell flats and the 100 cell. Now for the 200 cell flat, those might fit down the hole, but they're gonna touch the sides, but the 100s definitely won't get, get down there. So, I'm gonna go in here, got the heater on, and you're ready to start building. So the basics of a jab type planter is basically PVC with a, well, I don't have a cut yet, sharp end on it and something that'll open up. You stick it in the ground, you do something to open it up, and in between the two, you drop a plant start down the tube. Squeeze it, open it up, go to your next hole. Drop, repeat, down the row. So make things really quick, which I think it will, not necessarily quicker because I can do it pretty fast bent over, but I just kind of want to be able to do it standing up because I've got a whole you pick plant out and that's going to take quite a bit of effort and I don't want to bend over and do it all. So I'm working on this right now. Um, let me put a picture of it right here. The ones I've been looking at are the standing planters or standing plant. They got the standing plant, which is the uh, one that's two and three quarters. And they've got the standing plant cedar, which is only one inch in diameter. So here those are. Looks like the build's pretty easy. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. I'm gonna start off, I got one and a half inch PVC. I'm gonna make my first cut on the end. So I've been looking at the uh, images of those jab planters. They look pretty simple. Basically, start off with a piece of round stock or square stock for that matter, and then make a real sharp cut past 45. So, for that, I'm just going to use a regular hand saw and just line myself up. And I want to leave myself a good chunk here at the end. That way I can trim it to whatever length I need later. But the idea is to get it nice and angled with it. And the trick is to stay in your groove and don't let the pipe twist. And we'll just go ahead and get this sawed off. So, what we have here now is the one piece cut off and the other piece that was cut off of it. We take that, turn around. There's our beaked plant. So this will hinge open to drop out the start. When it does, the soil will fill in around the start in the ground. But now we gotta connect this to this. So, what I found in my little box that I was carrying up here they're one and five eighths tin bands. So those are tension bands. Imagine these go on like a line post or something to hold the little upright piece of metal for chain link fence to tension it tight. What I did was I opened it up flat and made a U. With this U, we're gonna go around the pipe and bend it to where it contours the pipe. This will give us the ability to take the next piece 
find its hinge point, attach it to get the hinge. So now I have that bent to the correct shape where it goes around the pipe. I want to line up this other piece to where it's right center on the band itself. To do that, I'll move the band up or down. I'm going to mark these holes here and on the other side, and that's where I'll drill through it. And I drilled my hole on both sides, and I've got these little carriage bolts. I don't know. I would have laying around from one of the tunnels. Five sixteenths by one and a quarter. Well, square head carriage bolts. Go in from the inside. Line them up with the hole, which is a little bit difficult. And then we're going to go through and place it into the clamp. Which might be easier said than done as well. But I think I got it figured out. We'll do one side first. There we go. Back the other one out. Bring it over. And do the same. No, oh, it fell out. But I'll get it in there. Now, got them both through, got a nut on both sides hand tight. I'm gonna hold on to the inside of it, and since they're carriage bolts, I wanna sink them, tighten down, and I'll loosen back up so it flexes. Okay. And now, see this side sunk? That side's still out. I'll do the same over here, and then loosen them up, so it'll actually swing on that hinge. So I went ahead and put two nuts on each side. That way the nuts lock on top of each other and actually lock them in place so they won't tighten anymore or fall off. But I've got a nice action going here. I also went through and drilled one and three eighths hole in the bottom of it, which is the size of the holes, or not one and three eighths, uh, three eighths. Yeah, three eighths hole in the bottom of it. That way I can drill through here after I get it aligned. Now I have discovered just playing around with it a little bit, alignment is very, very critical. So I need to get this perfectly aligned down here at the beak, but get this part right here parallel with it as well. See how it kicked up there? So I gotta find where that happy median point is. So it looks like it's about right there. So now I'm gonna take some tape and wrap around this so it holds it in place, and then I can drill my hole in the back through the PVC pipe and the uh, brace band there. Got everything lined up, so now I'm going to drill it. I'm gonna take all this apart, put a bolt in from the top, screw it in, and we should have the basics of this thing complete. Now, we got the carriage bolt right here, through from the inside, went around to the other side, and drove a tech screw in, which is just a self-tapping screw. I could have used a carriage bolt, but I found there a pain to get through there. Now, we can actuate it. Simple rubber band from the pack house over the carriage bolt and the tech screw, and there we go. It works. Now, drill a hole here, put a piece of rope through, come up to here, I marked off at my 52 inch because that's the size of the standard plant cedar. I'm going to cut it off, drill another hole for the rope to go through. So I've been messing around with it. I got the uh, rubber band on. I doubled that over, put a piece of rope through over that hole I drilled out through the top of it, coming up to the top and the hole I drilled here. And the hope was I tensioned this thing right like that, and then I would just grab it and it would actuate but it will not. There's not enough tension there. But if I grab it, it does pop. So what I need is either an elbow right here or something to where this is actually up higher. And then when I grab a hold of it, it pops. But see, then it's not closing. So I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do at this point. I'm gonna have to work on that and kind of figure it out. Might just be technique as well, but let me show you what it does. I got a bag of fertilizer here. I'm going to stick it in. So these things are really designed for plastic culture with the plastic all over your field. 
So I got a bag of fertilizer with plastic here. So we're just going to show you. Take it, stab it, drop your plant down the top, and then somehow you actuate it, pull it out, leave the plant behind. Go to the next one. Stab it again, drop your plant, pull it. Next one, move down the row. We do everything in landscape fabric, so hopefully it'll work. That worked pretty good. Got a nice hole in the fabric. Would have dropped in. We do everything in landscape fabric. It's already pre-burned. So we'll just have to be aiming for holes we already have, which I think will work great. But I'm going to go out and get a couple more pieces here, and we'll work on it tomorrow and see where we end up. So now I'm on day two for the build. Um, went and got a T. I put on top here. Originally, it was the pipe was up to here. So I cut off this little section, got a T, went through and added a piece of pipe in here that I cut off earlier. And then here in the middle, I used one of those brace bands I showed you in the beginning of the video. And I just straightened it out. Got a little piece of uh, PEX pipe that I had laying around, which you don't necessarily need this. I just didn't want it rubbing, the rope rubbing in the crotch right here. So it just kind of gives it a guide. It's not super important. But same way as it was originally, not on the outside. And then I brought it up and I drilled a series of holes in here because I wasn't sure which angle was best. But right now I'm using the middle one, which is about, well, let's get a tape measure real quick on it. It is about four inches out from the edge of the pipe. And the overall height of this is now right at about 51 inches. So that's similar to the standing plant cedar. But this is more of a standing plant transplanter. Our band works good. Get a little stretch out of the string, but I'm just going to have to work with it and tighten it a little bit. I also found you can do it this way or this way. And this allows you to actually hold on to it and stick it and then actuate it. But it also works this way as well. So I'm not 100% certain which way I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go try to find some thawed dirt right now and give it a test run and see how it actually works in the dirt because I haven't even tested it yet. This is just, you're watching me build this as I built this. I've had this idea in my head and this is kind of what it came out like. So. Got a nice little drop plants down. We'll see what it works. This is my first test run. We're going to stick it. Got one plug here. Drop it into the bottom. Open it. Pull it out. Did not touch it. Did not do anything. I'm going to bring you over there and look at it. So this is what I ended up with. Which is not too shabby actually. I mean, the leaf's a little bit under the soil. And just look at it. Plugs pretty much straight up and down. The biggest problem I see is that it looks a little deep. So once the soil fills back in around it, it's going to plant itself just a little bit deeper. But all in all, it's not bad. Definitely has some potential. Sure, I'll have to do some more work on it and kind of work on it a little bit here and there. Get it more tuned in. The one thing is though, I did stir this ground up with a stir poe. Um about two inches deep. That's kind of what I wanted because I'll just pull this out. These plugs are about two inches deep. So you can see there. So ideally I want the point to bottom out and then you open it and then the plug is left at that depth and then some of the dirt falls back around and then when the irrigation goes off it gets the rest of the dirt around and voila you got a lettuce plant planted in the ground without bending over now this is a very interesting build today you know i just kind of had an idea in my head I just kind of went at it, took you along the process with me. What we ended up with was something with a handle like that, a beak like that. Very similar to the stand-in plants, jab planters, hat-filled planters, 
whatever you want to call them, but it works as you can see. So hope you all like what you saw today. I thought it was useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.